Okay, to start out, I think the first thing I want to do is explain how I organize my palette. I use a double primary palette, which means I use a warm yellow, a warm red, and a warm blue, and I use a cool yellow, a cool red, and a cool blue. And the way I use these colors is if something is in shadow or getting very indirect light, I'm on the cool side. If I want sunlight to hit something, I'm on the warm side. My palette is also organized from uh, dark to light. My colors go are, are lighter in value as they move, move up on the palette. Every paint manufacturer has a different formula. There's, no, there's really no standard. Uh, Sometimes you know, a cadmium yellow will be very warm, sometimes a cadmium yellow will be very cool. Depending on the brand of paint, you, you have to uh, just, you know, pick, out your, pick out your colors by sight, not by name. On the brand of paint that I use is Graham uh, currently, and the, and the way the, the names of my colors, I use there's cadmium yellow is my warm yellow, cadmium red light is my warm red, and Viridian, which looks very green, is my warm blue. On my cool side, I use Azo yellow for my cool yellow. I use Alizarin crimson for my cool red, and I use ultramarine blue for my cool blue. Now, in landscape painting, you always want to be able to neutralize your colors because they're, you're, you're seeing through veils of mist or veils of air. You, color, the light is affecting colors. Uh, you, you want to be able to neutralize your colors a little bit so they don't look like they came right out of the tube. So on, on when I'm using my cool colors, I neutralize them with this mud. And this mud is, is very close to burnt umber. Uh, and it's mix, I mix this using equal parts of blue, red, and yellow. Uh, I came to this quite by accident one night. I was out of umber. And uh, it was late at night, I could, there was no art supply stores open, so I ended up mixing my own dark brown. And I liked it so well because it coordinated with the colors in, in ways that, that, that umber didn't. Because every element in here is one of these three. Now over here on the, on the uh, warm side, my, my formula is a little different. This is my, is my warm mud. And I try to make it look kind of a yellow ochre, uh, uh, raw or burnt sienna, some probably raw sienna or yellow ochre. I try to keep it somewhere in that range. To get that, it, this is about 99% yellow, my warm yellow. It's got a little tiny touch of red in it and a little tiny touch of my warm blue in it. And, and that gives it, gives it you know, so I, I just want a real nice neutral, uh, kind of a reddish yellow uh, a mud on this side. Now for my uh, for my uh, white uh, with Graham pigments I use titanium white. With Winsor Newton pigments I use soft mixing white. Uh, both of them have some zinc in it so it makes it makes the paint that makes the white a lot more creamy and pliable. Most titanium white is like trying to paint with library paste. So I try to find a white that has, some, has both titanium and zinc in it. Now, when I start out, I, I always start out with a toned canvas. So I use, and I use Liquin, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a Winsor Newton product, it's called Liquin, L-I-Q-U-I-N. And I take some of that and a little bit of pigment and I tone my canvas with that. I, I just I just don't like working on a white surface. There are artists who do. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I prefer I prefer my surface to have a little bit of a little tiny bit of color, and I prefer it to be wet. So I, I have better edge control if I'm not working uh, on a dry surface. Like the paint flows a lot better. Now, if you notice, I have a lot of liquid and very very little pigment in there. If you put, if you tone your canvas real dark, and when the paint's still wet, this, this color will bleed through and affect all your other colors. And I, so I wipe this down. I get the canvas, you know, fairly dry. I mean, it's, it's still wet. It's a wet surface, but I don't want it. It's thick and standing uh, wet. So then, 
I divide my canvas into thirds vertically and horizontally. And what this does is keeps me from, you know, this doesn't have to be super accurate. So I've got, I've got nine zones here. My sweet spots, my center of interest will probably be on one of these intersections. So that gives, that gives me these intersections ahead of time, so I, I kind of know compositionally where I'm starting. Uh, and it also keeps me from putting my horizon line in the middle of a canvas, which tends to make a very static composition. If, I, if, my, if, I, if my horizon line is in the center of my canvas, then I have two paintings of equal weight, and the viewer doesn't know which one to look at first. 